Kula vaya da vale, zapa ya da vale levelo, ziti ti kubala da ya gada. Thank you Lord Jesus, thank you Lord Jesus. Zete te 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 te, malosa titi kapa tota titi kutupate, rapata tapata. Ye pada vayo, zava ya vala, ya vala la vale levelo, maya vala la valo. We bless you, we bless you, Lord. Our Savior, the Supermakena, we declare tonight, Reign Supreme Lord, Reign Supreme Lord, Reign Supreme Lord. You are the Alpha and the Omega, that which is and which was to come, the Almighty. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. I read. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 6. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands shall they bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Amen. 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 We are lifting up our voice in prayer, and we are declaring, I receive power to command dominion, to have mastery over the night. In the name of Jesus, I receive power to command dominion, to have mastery over the night. In the name of Jesus, let us pray right now. Let us pray right now. Papa, I receive power. I receive power to command to me to have mercy for the night. In the name of Jesus Christ, 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 I receive power to command to me to have mastery to the night of her in the name of Jesus. Raka Guru Menotianta, he got that to Romanosa, he fit in Liquid Mino, Labarabarosa, he got those at the Menosa, he got the Labado, Legate Barabarosa, he got the Romano, he Paradia, he got the Paramenosa, he got the Barabarosa, Labarosa, Legate Banamenosa, he got the Barandaha, he got the 
chapter 12, verse 1 through 4. Acts chapter 12, verse 1 through 4. Now about the time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some, some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Amen. 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 We are lifting our voice in prayer. And we are declaring, my God and my glory, use tribulation to destroy the intention of the workers of iniquity. My God and my glory, use tribulation to destroy the intentions of the works of iniquity. Let's pray right now. Let's get the bad of the world. Let's pray right now. 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 Let's Give our lives to her. We declare, oh Lord, her. My God, my glory, her. This revelation, her. To destroy her. To wake us, her. To destroy her. To destroy her. To intention, her. To work us, her. To get her. To get the demons, 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 her. Any herald who has laid a violent hand on the church, on the children, like a boss, you to listen to her, you to listen to her, to destroy her, to destroy her, he gave her the intention of her, the focus of her, on the liquid, he burns up the other, he gave the dirty, rack up to Raman Mutu, he paraminos, he parandi, he gave her the liquor, he gave her the liquor, he gave Kato roba na tu branche, i kato roba nosa, i pelo no anusi, i kato roba nosa, i para nosa, i kato roba la tu, i prato roba nosa, i ke te 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 te, la kato roba nosa, i para nosa, i ke le nosa, i para la no kia, i le nosa, i le para la nanda, of the hero da, le para la nanda, of the devil da, le mi nosa, the kings da, the children of Iron da, the children da, the God da. Ranka to Romanosi, he below Manosa, he Palosa, he the one who have been found, he prison, he Leminosa, he Liberate, he declare, he Holy Ghost, he the Lord, he the Lord, he bring deliverance, he bring deliverance, he Paradoria, he Ranka to Romanosa, he Million to Romanosa, he Kinosa, he Paradoria, he Legavosa, he Lebanosa, he Parande, he Ketaminosa, he Kato Domane, he Keto. He malak to Raminosa, he pakapa, legete Raminosa, he ke de de de, laka to to Raminosa, he pe legete Raminosa, raka to Raminosa, he ke de Parande, he milo to Raminosa, he kato Raminosa, raka to to Raminosa, he milo Raminosa, he ke Parande, he ke de de de, laka to Raminosa, raka to Raminosa, raka to Raminosa, raka to Raminosa. La cato menos, la cato malitias, y cato menos, y maliente de nojo, y quinientos menos, la cato menos, la cato menos, y cato para la tuya, y cato para la tuya, y que le menos, la para menos, y cato menos, y pele le, la para menos, y cato menos, y miliente, y aparente, paliejo, 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 y la de, y para abajo, le menos a la, la cato menos, 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 la
Therefore his servant said to him, Let a young woman, a virgin, be sought for, for our king, for our Lord the king, and let her stand before the king, and let her care for him, and let her, her lie in your bosom, that our Lord the king may be warm. So they sought for a lovely young woman throughout all the territory of Israel, and found Abishai, the Shunammite, and brought her to the king. The young woman was very lovely, and she cared for the king, and served him, but the king did not know her. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggath, Haggath exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared for himself chariots and horsemen, and fifty men to run with him. To run with him. And his father had not rebuked him at any, at any time by saying, Why have you done so? He was, very, he was also very good looking. His mother had borne him after Absalom. Verse 9. No, I read the verse 7. Then he conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and with Abiathar, the priest. And they followed and helped Adonijah. Verse 9, we jump to verse 9. And Adonijah sacrificed sheep and oxen and fattened cattle by the stone of Zoheleth, which is in en Rogel. He also invited his brothers, the king's sons, and all the men of Judah, the king's servants. Then we jump to verse, 30, verse 32. And King David called to me, Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehuda. So they came before the king. Amen. 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 Okay, we are praying. This account that we just read is about Adonijah, David, and Solomon. Adonijah exalted himself to be king. Meanwhile, the father have not allowed him yet. And the Bible says the throne was set for Solomon to occupy. But Adonijah, with his evil conspiracy, conspired. To take a seat that doesn't belong to him. We are praying, we are declaring that, oh God, oh Lord, as I lift up, up my voice in prayer, I deny access to any power from the pit of hell that, that is sitting to occupy my seat of glory. I declare tonight, uh, let your fire consume them. Uh, let your fire
Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. Genesis 3, verse 1 through 4. Kaba dozi de de bosa. Lega de de bataosiante. Lega de bosa. Lega de bosiante. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat, eat it, nor shall you eat it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will sh- not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Amen. Amen. We are declaring. I declare every temptation with the devil is manipulating through the gate of affection for my downfall. Jehovah, whichever agent they are coming through of, by the fire of, of the Lord of, expose of, and destroy it of, in the name of, of Jesus of Nazareth my low brother, my grandfather,
For oh God, you are good and your mercies endure forever. Ma sha tala da da ba ba ba. You are good and your mercies endure forever. Ma sha tala ga da ya ba 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 ba. You are good and your mercies endure forever. Wa te de 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 ya ma ma mo sha da 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 ba ba. We sing praises to your holy name. We bless your holy name, Jesus. A te de ge de ya ba 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 la da 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 ba ba. Lift up your voice, open your mouth, give him praise. A te de 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 ya ba 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 da ba da ba ba ba. Ira pa kama ya ma ma mo sha ta da 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 ya ba 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 ba. It is good to praise the Lord. It is good to sing songs of love to Him. Open your mouth. Bless His name. Another chance for you to come into His presence with singing. Lift up your voice. We come before your presence, Lord. To glorify your name. To lift you up. To exalt you. Lift up your voice. I bless you, I bless you, I bless you, Jesus. For the Lord, you are good and your mercies endure forever. We lift up our hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For you are good and your mercies and dear forever. I bless you, Jesus. Your mercies, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, Jesus. Let it rise from the depths of your heart. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. You are good and your mercies and dear forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Ah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh,
to the great I, I am. Who can compare with you? We lift our hands in. Oh, to the great, to the great. Yesterday, today, forever be the same. We lift our hands to you and say, Neither the any rock, you're the rock of ages. We come to you and we hide ourselves. There is no.
You are the rock of ages, yesterday, today, forever the same. Lift up your voice. There is none, there is none holy like you. You are good, Lord. You are good and your mercies endure forever. Great is thy faithfulness. We crown you, Lord of all. We crown you, King of kings. Mighty one. We search and we find no one great like you. Jesus, you are Lord. There is none holy like you. Neither is there any rock neither is through so many things and Lord, Lord we need you we need you we need you there is someone you are worshipping tonight you need Jesus Lord we need you in situations Lord that we are in we need you we need you the rock. We need you as the healer. Lift it up. We need you. For you said you will never leave nor forsake us. Oh, Jesus. We need you. We need you, Lord. 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 Declare, declare, declare. We. It's not over yet. We need you, Lord. We need you. We need you. We need you, Lord. 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 Say we trust you, Jesus. We trust you. We we trust you, Lord. We trust you to make a way. We trust you, We trust you, Lord, to make a way. Jesus. We trust you. Let it all say we trust you. We trust you. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We trust 
trust you, Lord, to make a way. We trust you to make a way. We trust you, we trust you, we trust you, we trust you, yeah, yeah. We cannot do it on our own. We have no power of our own. We trust you, Jesus. We trust you, Lord. 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 Oh, Lord, we trust you, yeah, yeah. We trust you, Lord. 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 That situation is not over. Trust the Lord. We trust you, Lord. Trust him to make a way. Trust him to make a way. Trust him to make a way. We trust you, Lord. The ancient of days, his man over us is love. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, we trust you, we trust you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Yeah, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Lift it up from the bottom of our hearts, Lord. We love you, Lord. We declare it, we declare it. We love you, we love you, Jesus. We Tell him how much you love him. We love him. Tell him how much you love him. Jesus, I love you. 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 Jesus, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you. of your our hearts da, 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 da. who is there like unto you you who created us in your likeness and for your pleasure you appointed us to be your very own so we lift our hands to you to declare that we trust you to make a way where it seems that there can be no way we lift up our hearts to declare, Lord, that we love you. In the midst of the storm, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Dependable, dependable God. It doesn't matter what comes my way, you are still God. Yeah. Intentional, intentional God. Everything is working up for my good. Dependable God. Dependable. Everything is working, I say. Everything is working up on my good. 
dependable, dependable guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter what comes my way, you are still guy. Intentional guy. Intentional, intentional guy. Everything is working up on my game. Everything is working yeah. up on my game. Jesus, you are so good to me. In all circumstances, in all circumstances, oh, you are so good to me. In all circumstances, in all circumstances, oh, Jesus, you are so good to me. Yeah. In all circumstances, yeah, 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 yeah. in all circumstances. Oh. Intentional, intentional guy. Everything is working up on my game. Everything is working up on my game. Dependable guy. Dependable, dependable guy. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter what comes my way, I still got yeah, intentional guy. Intentional, intentional guy. Everything is working up on my game. Everything is working up on my game.
unto you. And peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. And from the seven spirits that are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. And the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And has made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. And all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Lord. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty. I am Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, and beside me there is none. And I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice of, as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in a book, and send them unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and get about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shined in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. And so write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Thou owner of the church, militant and triumphant. Thou that holdest in the midst of your palms the angels of the churches that you have redeemed with your precious blood. Thou that art the bona fide owner of the church, having bought and redeemed it with your precious infallible blood. Thou Lord of hosts, risen as God above all. The head of the corner, which was previously the rejected stone. Thou Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of the faith. The lamp of God, slain yet alive commanding after the unusual order of divine prominence, authority and beauty, majesty and power, dominion and might. And I saw a lamb as it had been slain, standing in the midst of the throne and in the midst of the four beasts and of the four and twenty elders. And I saw him and he took from the hand of the ancient of days, the scroll which was written within and on the backside. And he broke the seals and declared the mysteries of the redemption of humanity. Unto you be the glory, the honor, the dominion, and the majesty. Thou that art head above all. Father, we declare, ride upon the praises of our lips. Inhabit the exaltation of your saints. Seize the atmosphere for a blissful encounter with the children that you have redeemed with your blood. And command that by the entrance of your word, there shall be light after the order of the marvelous. 
and let this light violently encroach the regions of darkness and command the strong men from the dark domain to surrender without reservation. Kubule sututu manu irioto sokotu miande. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Upon the honor of the identity of the Son of Righteousness, we command freedom of the order that has manifested. In word and in deed, let chains be broken, let burdens be lifted, let yokes be corroded, and let shackles be shattered. From this hour, O oh God, let the souls that have been oppressed by the diabolic mechanics of hell, let them leap out for joy. And by the honors of your marvelous light, grant that they that dwelt even in the land of the shadow of death, upon them light will shine. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Father, we petition the honors of the spirit of wisdom, and we consult the matchless, deathless reserve of supernatural wisdom. Release counsel of the order that is wonderful, and grant that by the instructions of the spirit divine, we will never err. That by the instructions of the spirit divine, we will arrive in destiny with majesty and on time. That after the instructions of the spirit divine, our utterances will command new creation realities. We open our spirit to the supply of faith that comes by the hearing of the word. And even as we hear Jehovah transform, renew, and make all things glorious for your name alone to be praised after this encounter let every life count in jesus mighty name amen hallelujah put your hands together child of the lord i'm sure you have to be saying a very big and a loud amen wherever you are church is not in a place church is in a presence god is the impossibility specialist and true worshipers are the invocation specialist and so when we invoke the presence of the lord Every habitation is transformed into a sanctuary in which divine ordinances and services can be performed. Wherever you are, I pray an apostolic prayer for you that the name of the Lord will become a towering reality in that habitation. And by the end of this encounter, you will get a much less, you know, testimony in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. On behalf of the Reverend Nathan Kwesi Yeboah and Mama Paulina Yeboah, I want to say a very big, warm welcome and the God bless you to every one of you. These are the people that God has put as the parents of our assembly. And on that note, we want to say you, the loyal listener, the online congregant and the faithful church member, I pray that you will find extreme joy by the encounter with the presence tonight. I always like to remind you we have an evangelistic mandate and now we must adopt a new evangelistic culture. And so be reminded to share the link, invite somebody to watch. Just find a way to make sure you have given the word of God to another. We are not putting evangelism on hold until after the lockdown. It behooves us to be in tune with the Great Commission, even in the activities or in the environment that we find ourselves now. Paul says, I am an ambassador of the gospel, even unto bonds. But as sure as I am bound, the word of God cannot be bound. And so may the word that is free in the lockdown give you freedom indeed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Oh, how we love the time with scripture. Our time with scripture is not just interesting, it is blissful. The joy of the word is an uncommon joy. We have supernatural faith. 
in the scripture. John 10, 35, the Bible says, And if you call them gods, unto whom the word of the Lord came, and the scripture cannot be broken. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 21, the angel told Daniel, But I am, there is none that, you know, fighteth with me except Michael, your prince. But this time I have come to show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. Many people may boast about many dimensions of scripture, but our scripture is the truth. Our scripture is not only true, it is the truth. Truth is totality. What is true may be partial, but what is truth is totality. And many people say truth is sub subjective. Truth is not subjective. Truth is rigidly objective. This is because Jesus personified truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The truth is not a statement. Truth is a person. And if truth is not a statement, then truth does not need intelligent statements to defend it. The truth is a life. And may he give you intercourse that will impregnate you with destiny. Say, I hear you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. A wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. We're going to preach, pray, prophesy, minister, and command new creation realities by grace and by grace alone. Turn your Bibles with me to John chapter 21. Last week we started something and we want to bring it to a joyous um, your session conclusion. Amen. I believe that you, you, eternity will even be too short to get to the depths of every chapter in God's word. So we might call it a joyous session conclusion just so that we will have the, the go ahead to feast on other portions of scripture as well. It was wonderful last week and um, this week we're continuing from where we took off in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So John 21, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simeon, Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and the two other disciples, seven of them in all. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We will also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and the night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord. He get his fishes coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from the land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring up the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up, and drew the net to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus saith unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lamps. He said to him again the second time, Simon, Son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto me, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because the Lord said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou gathest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shalt get thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death 
he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter turning about, see the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayed thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We can read on and on and on and on, and it's amazing that sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, the best sermon is the one that has a lot of the scripture read and little exposition added. I pray for you that you have an uncommon appetite for what is written. I sincerely pray for you. We talked about many things last week, and even if we have to go to the passages that we used last week, there's still a lot to talk about, but we'll make progress in Jesus' name. So in John chapter 21, verse 5, the Bible makes us understand that Jesus saith unto them, remember they had gone a fishing all night by the suggestion of Peter and by the concurrence of six other disciples. They fished, they toiled, they did everything all night. Effort without intervention is not naturally remedial by the passage of time. It is not. If you think, oh, I just need to continue, I just need to continue, I will make it, that's not true. Because time does not make valid insufficient effort. Effort on its own without divine intervention does not have natural curative measures to inefficiency. The fact that you are keeping on trying does not mean necessarily that you will win. Many people never quit, but they didn't win until they left. So it is possible to not quit and still not win. A lot of the times we, pre- um, we say, um, you know, winners never quit and quitters never win. That is very true, but it is just unidirectionally true. Because the fact that you are not stopping does not mean you will win. There must be intervention to bring winning. The passage of time is not a natural vindication for effort. May God intervene and help you. You've been trying to do the business in many dimensions, and you are just trying to be hard and say, I will never quit, I will never quit. Never quitting is good, but effort only by consistence has not natural curative measures to inefficiency. There must be a divine intervention. Tonight, Jesus is going to say to somebody a word that will end the futility of sustained effort, a word that will end futility of consistent mechanics, a word that will just cross the sterility and place an end to the days of barrenness. You are going to hear a word that will give you many, give you more, and give you the order of the abundance in Jesus' mighty name. So Jesus stood at the shore. He watched them. And remember we said he called them children. And I told you, the master has been trying to call you all this while, except that the title he's not using, he's using, you don't think it is you. Because he's shouting children, you think he's shouting after some, some people else and not you. Maybe you have seen yourself too mature, and the master's attention has not been enough to, to, to bring any difference in your life. Humble yourself and respond to the title children, and the massive turn around will be your portion. So he stands at the shore and he says, children, have ye any meat? And they say, no, we've not anything. We have not gotten anything. Then the verse 6, he answered and said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. I want you to note that. He said, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Then... The Bible says, when they caught the fishes, and they realized that they couldn't pull the fishes, they had found, and they couldn't pull, then the disciple that Jesus loved, that was John, he shouted and said, it is the Lord. And Peter gets his coat around him, and then he dived into the sea to go and meet Jesus. When they got to the land, I want you to read something with me, and then we'll take up from there. Just a reread so that we'll get emphasis. So the Bible says, verse 9, As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish 
which ye have now caught. Bring ye of the fish which ye have now caught. Let's go to verse 5. Then saith Jesus unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. Then the verse 6. Cast your net on the right side, and ye shall find. Then they cast the net, and they found. Now, this is what I am bringing your mind to. When Jesus asked them, have ye any meat? They said, we have nothing. Listen to his wording very well, because it is a divine protocol that if you miss, you suffer. Do you have anything? They said, we don't have anything. He said, no problem. Cast your net on the right side, and you will find. He didn't say you will have. He said, you will find something. So they cast the net, and they found fishes. Now, when they found, then the Bible says, they now managed to get to shore. When they managed to get to shore, then Jesus had already set on bread and fish. They saw a, um, a fire of coals there, and fish laid there on and bread. It is when they came to sit with him and saw the fish and the bread, then he told them, go and bring the fish which you have now caught. It means the permission to own what you found. It is now I am giving it to you. I'm bringing your mind to something. Children, do you have anything? We don't have anything. Cast your net on the right side and you will find. He didn't say you will have. You will find. If you find it is not yet yours. You need the identity of the one that gave the instruction to discover. When you identify the one that instructed you to find, then his identity will now give you permission to own what you have found. There are many people who have found, but they have not discharged to own. Listen to me. The fact that it is in your hand does not mean it is yours. So Jesus says, you know what? Cast your net on the right side. They cast their net, and then they realize, ah, the thing is, is a bountiful thing. What occurs to you naturally is that this is for them. Is that not so? If you look at Jesus' wedding, he didn't say, cast your net on the other side and you shall own. He said, ye shall find. What you have found is not yet yours until the identity of the one that gave the instruction is revealed. So when John said, it is the Lord, when his identity was revealed, then Peter said, oh, then now let's dive and meet the one who brought the instruction. When they went to see him, then with the authority of somebody who has fish without fishing, he now gave them a discharge to say, go and bring what you have now caught, not what you previously caught, because previously you had only found it, you had not caught it. It is now that I am discharging you to own what you have found. I pray for you from this apostolic hour. Some people have found money, but they don't own it yet. Some people have found riches. They have not caught it yet. Jesus never said, cast your net on the other side and ye shall catch. He said, ye shall find. There is a protocol difference between finding and owning. To find is a result of instruction. To be discharged to own is a result of power. And to be discharged to enjoy what you own is the result of a blessing. There are three different protocols. Read the book of Ecclesiastes. And Solomon says, I think in Ecclesiastes 5, he's saying, I, there is a man that has riches and power and wealth. Yet God has not given him the permission, the blessing to enjoy what he has. And there is a stranger that partakes of what he has. Listen to me. Whenever you see greatness, number one, you have to receive instruction to find. Number two, you have to receive power to get. And number three, you have to receive a blessing to enjoy. It takes instruction to find. It takes power to possess. And it takes a blessing to be blessed by what you have. There are people that have money. They have not received the blessing to enjoy the money. So in as much as they have a large bank account, they are paying large hospital bills. It is one thing to receive instruction to find. It is another thing to be discharged with power to get. And it is another thing to be blessed with the gift to enjoy what you have found. 
That's why Moses reminded them in Deuteronomy 8:18, Thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. To find wealth is consequent to instruction, but to get wealth is responsive to power. It is power that sponsors getting. Instruction sponsors finding. Have you found money? Have you got money? Or are you blessed to enjoy money? Which level are you? Many people think to find is to get. Can't you see your life? It's possible you are on the finding level. And listen to me. If you are not given to instruction, you don't find. And I told you, instruction is, is crystallized out of consultation. Consultation brings counsel. And the strength of counsel is timing. If you want to arrive in destiny and find solutions to long-standing problems, what you need is an instruction. Ah, may God give you a word in the name of the Lord Jesus. Put your hand on your head and provoke something. Say, I receive a word. Say, I receive an instruction. Say, I receive a divine prompting. Say, I receive a spiritual nudging. Say, my ears... I command you from this apostolic hour, receive grace to hear and be instructed to find in Jesus' name. In my young life, before the many old years that God is going to give me, I have seen that the level of finding, the level of getting, and the level of being blessed to enjoy what you have got is three different things. And Jesus exhibited it in this encounter. Have ye anything? They say we have nothing. Say so no problem. Let me show you the process you go through to have something. The first thing is you receive instruction to find. So cast your net on the other side. That was instruction. Then the next thing is John said, ah, it is the Lord. When you make the Lord out and you remember the Lord your God, then he gives you power to get. So he he now discharges them and he said, the fish that you have now caught, go and bring it. I thought they caught it when they were on the sea. He said, no, when you got it on the sea, you had found it. You had not caught it. It is now I am giving you permission, discharging you to go and get. Now, when you get by the discharge of the blessing to enjoy, you own. He said, bring what you have now caught. And let me show you a mystery. If you spell the word now, Jesus said, go and bring what you have now caught, not what you caught then. If it was what he caught, they caught then, they said, he would have told them, now go and bring what you previously caught. But he didn't say, now go and bring what you previously caught. He said, go and bring what you have now caught. It means it is now I've given you the discharge to possess what you thought you had found. If you take now and you write it backwards, you will get one. Is that not so? It is the power of the Lord. In the now, that gives you grace to have won what you were contending for. Now, when you write now backwards, you get won. When you rearrange the words, you will get own. It's the same O-W-N. So when Jesus comes to say, I discharge you by an ordained pronouncement now. Receive victory out of what is already won to own what you have found. It is now upon the premise of what is already won so that you can own it. Many people are at the level of finding. You know the number of interviews you have attended. You don't struggle to, to chance on an interview. You don't struggle to be given the platform to come and make a presentation. Is that not it? You don't struggle to be called to process or you know, render in an, an, an application. You've, you've sent thousand and one around. You've met many people. You don't struggle to chance on good business partners. Always investors are around you. You are on the level of finding. It will take a discharge by the revealed identity of the instructor to make you own what you have gotten. I pray for you that from this hour, you will get instruction to find. Then you will get power to get and you will receive the blessing to own. What is on now is as a result of the prophetic discharge by the one who has already won the victory for you. From this apostolic hour, you are not a finder alone. You are a getter. You are not a getter alone. You are a participation of the getting. You are going to be a blessed partaker of the getting. I prophesy according to resurrection protocol that Jesus who is able to have fish without having gone fishing, his identity is the 
precedence on which I give you an apostolic discharge. Receive instruction to find. Receive power to get. And receive the blessing to own. Lift up your voice and say, I receive it. Kebo sata dabalo. Is it healing? What you have found, you will get. And when, what you get, you will own. Is it married? What you have found, you will get. And what you've gotten, you will own. Kabalo sata dabalo. So Jesus told them, this is the protocol. Remember, when they got to land, Jesus hadn't gone fishing, but he had fish and bread and fire. That means it takes the supernatural to influence the supernatural. When you sign on to the resurrection, you have signed on to a supernatural protocol, and there must be un undeniable evidence of the efficacy of the supernatural. Many people do not have the workings of the power of the supernatural, so it has been limited to a story. But listen, the supernatural is not a story. The Jesus that gave them the discharge to own what they had gotten by finding, he had fish on the shore when he had not fished. How did he get it? It's called the supernatural. Do you know that by resurrection protocol, it is possible to pay your bills before salary comes? Are you aware? This is resurrection protocol. Do you know that as a man of God, before the lockdown is released, God can pay you. Before offerings come, are you aware there can be provision? Because resurrection protocol is the signing on to the supernatural with evidence beyond any denial. So he said, you know why I can give you an authority discharge to go and bring what you have caught? It's because I have fish without fishing. And listen to me, when he told them to go and bring what they had caught, it is not what they brought that they ate. If your feeding is by your efforts alone, you are woefully limited. The resurrection protocol gives room for undeniable evidence of the order of the supernatural. Hey! What we are discharged now, as a result of what has been won, we can own. May that be your portion in the name of Jesus. So they brought the fish. They said, okay, 153. <laughs> Go and bring it. But you know, before you bring the fish you have been fishing, you should know I have fish already. Somebody, you have been discharged before the, the doctor comes to talk to you. Somebody, the, the, the growth is gone even before the specialist administer medicine. This level is possible, and I pray it will be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Instruction to find power to get, blessing to own. Hallelujah. So the Bible says they found fire in verse 9. As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring up the fish which ye have now caught. I give you an ordained discharge to go and own what you now have caught. Simon Peter went up and drew net, the net to land full of great fishes, and hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Verse 12, Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of his disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? There are dimensions of divine encounters that have immunity to doubt. There are dimensions. Remember in the account of Genesis, when the brothers of Joseph realized he was alive, and he asked them, is my father still alive? And they said, yes. He sent a dimension of prosperity, beast laden with the good things of Egypt. And I said, go and give this to my father. So the brothers came home and they told the father, Joseph is yet alive. And the Bible says the father said, ah, you are lying to me. I don't believe Joseph is yet alive. Then he came out and he saw the gifts from Egypt that Joseph had sent to him. Jacob looked at the gift and he said, no, this is enough. Joseph is alive. There is a dimension of prosperity that is reserved for the signature of the divine alone. There is a way God prospers a man, and it is enough immunity to double-mindedness of his existence. May God give you a miracle that will silence your doubts about him in Jesus' name. So the Bible says at this time, nobody asked him, who are you? Because everyone knew that it was the Lord. May God give you a healing. May he give you a 
married, a breakthrough. May he give you a gift. May he give you grace that will dissolve every iota of doubt in the name of the Lord Jesus. And remember, the nets did not break. In other miracles, the nets were breaking. But in this miracle, the nets did not break because there was help from the divine. We'll talk about many of those things later. So in, in verse 11, Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, 150 and three, for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Then verse 12, Jesus saith unto them, come and dine. And none of the disciples does ask him, who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. Watch this. Jesus has set a table again. Remember the first time he set a table for the disciples, there were 12 of them. Hmm? And at that table, they had a question about identities. The master said, one of you will betray me. And everybody began to ask, is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? At the supper, the meal on the table hmm, was bread and wine. Now, after the resurrection, the meal on the table is bread and fish. Now, the dynamics of what plays out at the table of bread and wine is different from the dynamics that plays out at the table of bread and fish. And I pray for you that you will taste both tables in Jesus' name. At the table of bread and wine, there is betrayal. There is a Judas at the table who is Satan possessed. And remember, whenever Jesus sets a table, it has a mandate. At the last supper, Jesus had the mandate of ascending the cross. Judas had the mandate of betraying him. Are you understanding me? So once there is a table, there is a mandate, and the mandate must make the man respond to the date. I pray for you that when God blesses you, you will see the divine design when you are invited to dine. You will see it. There is a divine design when you are invited to dine. When Jesus set the table with the twelve, he sat at the table with a divine design that he was going to ascend the cross. Judas was Satan possessed and he knew that he also had the mandate of betraying the Lord. So now, when it is bread and wine, you have to get insight for betrayal from the camp of the enemy. Insight for betrayal. May God give somebody discernment eh, that you will not be a fool. When you see prosperity, I've seen many believers, when God sets in front of them a table with bread and wine, they are oblivious of the fact that a Satan-possessed personality can be present at the table. It is majesty to select 12 disciples, but it is not anything short of lunacy to not know who will betray you. It is majesty to call 12 disciples, but it is lunacy to not know who among the twelve at the table will betray you. And so Solomon says, be careful. When a king invites you to a booty and you sit at a table and you look at his dainties and he said, drink and eat. And he said, put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. When you see abundance, abundance does not have directional. You know, that is why 2 Chronicles 20.20, is it 1 Chronicles 20.20 says, Believe the Lord your God, and then you will be established. Believe his prophet, then you will prosper. Because prosperity is not establishment. The fact that there is plenty does not mean there is maturity by default. It takes believing God, a personal relationship with God, to be established. And then it takes prophetic kingdom principles to prosper. And Solomon says, when you sit at the table with abundance, remember that abundance does not have the, 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 the final say. Abundance does not have direction. Feelings have no ceilings, so you cannot use them in your major dealings. If you use feelings, you will fall into trouble. When the master gives you an invitation to dine, and the table is filled with bread and wine, he is reminding you that there is a betrayer at the table because every table is before a mandate. When it is bread and fish, when it is bread and fish, 
there is no betrayer at the table. The possible betrayer is you, so avoid it. <laughs> Many people, when they think that Judas is not around, they say, ah, now we are safe. Beware, Judas is not around because you look like him. So don't fall to his temptation. So when it is bread and wine, Judas is there. Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? And Judas walked away. Now it is bread and fish. And bread and fish, consequent to a major catch. Oh, let me pray for you. Kubalu se tutu malokura idie moloso tonoma. May you value the presence above the promised land so that you can be like Moses and say, But what good is it if milk and honey is devoid of the presence of the Lord? What good is it if there are floodlights and the disco lights and the Shekinah is absent? What good is it? I pray for you that when God blesses you and He sets a table of bread and fish, you will not be the betrayer. May you never love God, um, you know, less than you love money. May you never. Let it never be that the contest between the mammon of unrighteousness and the father, the mammon of unrighteousness wins as pertaining your heart. May you never even give money the chance to contest with God over your heart. May you never give money that chance. At the table, when it is bread and wine, Judas is ordained to damnation. You may not know, is it I, it is I, is it I, you are saved. When it is bread and fish, Judas is not there. He is already dead. Beware, don't be the next Judas. Too many people now in the 21st century are in love with the world. And when we are chasing prosperity, and the Spirit of the Lord is surprised why everybody wants Solomon's money, and yet how slippery money is, Solomon is an example. Yet nobody wants to look at the example of how difficult, the encumbrances of abundance. Everybody just says, ah, me, if God blesses me, that's all. If God blesses you, that's not all. There is divine design when there is an invitation to dine. And so you better be looking forward to the mandate. I pray for you. You will not love money above God. You will not love cars above God. I always tell people, do not worship the make of a car more than your maker. You cannot love Mercedes-Benz more than your maker. You can't worship the make of a car more than your maker. It's abomination. Today, there are preachers, when they see Lamborghini, when they see Mercedes-Benz, they say the, the Rover series, now they say Bugatti, all sorts of... These things are good, though. but may you never worship the make of a car more than your maker. A vehicle, a donkey in Jesus' day. And now this is, the, this is the measurement of ministerial success. We cannot be this cheap, children of the Lord. The mammon of unrighteousness, we use it to attain divine riches. At the table, bread and fish, there are seven disciples. You know why? Perfection. When Jesus brings you money, he's told you, I've done my part to make sure you are not a son of perdition. Don't disappoint me. Do not become the Judas at the bread and fish table. We pass the bread and wine table. Now it is the bread and fish table. Many people survived the bread and wine. They didn't turn their backs on God. But when small money came, they became the Judas who fell at the bread and wine. You will not fall in the name of Jesus. You will not fall in the name of Jesus. You will not fall in the name of Jesus. Take some one minute, blast in tongues for me. Say, God, I will not disappoint you when you bless me. Give me grace to pledge unflinching allegiance to the love for you. Kabo sete maloto zobale. Kori male de briko tusuri asta balande de de de. Roko toto to bala. De zekete kete. The divine design, when I am invited to dine, I will pursue it. so. It is not that I will get money small and I will, get, I will tell the church to give me a break. L let me go and settle some things before I come back. Pray, 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 pray. We don't have time. Lift up your voice and say, no, I'm not going to disappoint the heavens. I'm not going to be the Judas at the bread and fish table. Judas has fallen at the bread and wine table. Now it is the order of the bread and fish table. I will not be the Judas. 
Lord, let me not fall. Let me not do more than anything else, oh God. Of the Lord Jesus, you will not be the Judas at the bread and fish table. Kabado sada zamalo. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. God bless you. We will love God to the end. Remember, the promise can be given and the presence is withdrawn. Remember what Moses did? God told Moses, ah, you know you, I'm not going to Canaan with you. Because you people are a stiff-necked nation. And the Bible says, Moses said, ah, if you are not going, we are not going. You know what God told Moses? He said, oh, don't worry. You think I won't give you the promised land? I will give it to you. I will send my angel before you and he will go with you and fight for you so it is possible to have an angel discharge to go with you when god has decided not to go many people are walking with the angels of prosperity but god is not there so when you look at their lifestyle in their prosperity you know this guy is far from god beware when you are using abundance as the barometer of the presence it's not true there are angels of god specifically reserved to operate when the divine withdraws read your bible they are angels of God specifically reserved to operate when the divine is withdrawn. Don't think that there are certain presence, you know, you need. <laughs> there is a certain awakening that when you wake up, you should know that your hair has been cut. Ask Samson. There is a certain awakening. When you wake up, you will know your hair has been cut. And it's Samson. You would think the strength is there and then you realize, ah, what happened to me? That's later. There are angels, there are, there are spiritual modalities of abundance hmm, that operate even when the divine has withdrawn. That's how come Solomon could get into that kind of filth. Because abundance does not have direction. Establishment is with the belief in God, not in prosperity principles. Prosperity principles is just for abundance. Establishment is with belief in God. The reason why it is possible to enter the doldrums of filth with abundance is that they are angelic presence that are able to make do the promises of abundance, the milk and only dimension. They are angels they are angels that are sent to ensure the fulfillment of the milk and only dimensions when the divine has withdrawn. So you must love the presence above the promised land. On the table with bread and wine there were twelve. On the table with bread and fish there were seven. Make sure you are not the Judas. And it will be a blessing. Hallelujah. Let's continue. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon, Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Simon Barionas, lovest thou me more than these? Do you have a superior comparative love? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my lambs. 16, he said to him the second time, Simon Barionas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Then he said unto him, feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon Barionas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Hmm. Around this time, you realize that Peter was sober and he had learned his lesson. He didn't say, I swear, I'll love you, I swear. No, no. When you have gone through some things, there is a default humility that you get. When you see people, you know, pledging allegiance to God with bloated, swelling words, you know they've not seen anything. 
Peter had learned his lesson. He said, I swear I will die with you. And Jesus said, uh, the cock will not crow twice, and you will deny me thrice. You will, you will go ahead of the cock and deny me, even before the cock gets to three. You would have failed three times. The cock will, will crow twice, and you will deny thr thrice. But so now Peter has learned his lessons. <laughs> so badliness. So oh, sir, you know I love you. When Jesus asked him again, he said, oh, Lord, thou knowest. <laughs> First he says, I know I will follow you. I will know. Now he says, oh, God, you know, thou knowest. When you mature, you become childlike. <laughs> when you are naive, you sound like a lion. When you are mature, you sound like a lamb. This is it. Remember, listen, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he's the lamb of God. If you are, if you are a lion, it is in your father's household, not in the eyes of God. There's nowhere that the Bible says he's the lion of the tribe of God. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. When it comes to God, he's a lamb. In the kingdom, maturity is with the lamb. Huh? Maturity is with the lamb. When men are growing, they sound as if they have arrived. When they grow, they sound as if they are now starting. Look at the life of Paul. When he was finishing, he said he was the chief of sinners. <laughs> when you are loud mouth, it shows you are now coming. Simone, lovest thou me? Say, oh Lord, thou knowest. May sobriety give you an upper hand in the battles of life. Eh? Now, you know why Jesus asked Peter three times? Number one is because he had denied him three times. So he had to make him correct the oath of denial three times with the oath of allegiance. When you fail ten times, God will give you ten chances to come back. Never kill yourself. And say, oh, where I've got into there, I won't come back. No, 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 no. He denied him. I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. Jesus asked him, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Three times. The second isogetic reason, inspired reason, that Jesus loved Peter and asked him three times whether he loved him. Remember? The covenant of salvation was a covenant to the fathers. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Now, when the seed of the covenant became bondage in Egypt for 400 years, he sent Moses to go and deliver them, remember? So the deliverer that was born in the time when the seed was in captivity for 400 years was Moses. The miracle of Moses in Exodus chapter 2 or 3, the Bible makes us understand that when Moses was born as a deliverer, eh? <laughs> his mother tried to hide him for three months. Three months. And after the three months, the mother realized that she couldn't do anything again. So they put <laughs> Moses in a basket like a fishing net. And they put the basket by the flags of the river. Remember? And when Pharaoh's daughter came, Pharaoh's daughter heard the child crying, and uh, Pharaoh's daughter said, bring that basket. They brought the basket, and Pharaoh's daughter looked inside. And she said, oh, I'm sure this is one of the Hebrew children. The mother, the father is afraid, and they've done everything to hide. And so now, this, this thing, this child is a helpless child. That needs a nurse. So remember before Jesus died, huh? he had a transfiguration experience on which Moses appeared. So at that transfiguration experience, it's not written in the Bible, but I believe the context of the conversation. And Moses was telling Jesus, Remember how when I was sent as a deliverer to my own people, my mother tried for three months and gave up, and she didn't know what to do. So she handed her frustrations over to God, and then God brought in a deliverer from the camp of the enemy. So when Pharaoh's daughter came, her emotions were seized by the superior protocol called compassion, and she looked at the Hebrew boy from enemy camp, and said, this one needs a nurse. Simon, can I inject you with the compassion of Pharaoh's daughter? 
for the destiny child. Can I inject you? So Jesus is looking at the water and he's looking at the net with the fishes, 153. And he said, these are not fishes. These are helpless children like Moses on the river. Simon, can I inject you with compassion to feed my sheep for me? Child of God, when Jesus was looking at the fishes, he was seeing helpless families who did not know what to do with their destiny children. When Jesus is looking at the flock now, the church now, the world now, he's looking at confused people with abominable morals. They don't know what to do after three months. Simon, after three sessions of pledging allegiance, will you be faithful when I choose you as a nurse for this small baby? Now remember, Miriam came to Pharaoh's daughter and said, can I go and call a nurse? To come and take care of the child. And Pharaoh's daughter said yes. She went to call Moses' mother. As the nurse. She was a Hebrew. Who came to take care of the Hebrew. And it was her own child. When she finished taking care of Moses. The Bible says she took him back to Pharaoh. How can you take your own child. Back to somebody you know. Is not the mother of the child. Why? She pledged allegiance as a nurse. And she did not turn her back even to that mortal contract. She told Pharaoh's daughter, I will take care of this boy and bring him back to you. Imagine the maternal instincts of affiliation that she had to suppress the day she was returning Moses back to Pharaoh's daughter. Can you imagine? Jesus is looking into the eyes of Peter. If I appoint you the bishop of the souls of my children, when my children are matured, will you leave them for me? Or you will come and tell me that they are your church members and you start abusing them. Peter, when Pharaoh's daughter asked Moses' mother to go and take care of her child, and Moses' mother knew that this is the son of my womb, and yet after nurturing him, she took him back to the palace. Why? She had given her word. Child of God, God is looking for a pledge of allegiance from you. He will give you souls and tune the ears of the souls to listen to the word that comes out from your mouth. Also, Dani Enipa Kra, no amount on a su, say one fentian yamiasem ewa when no more hen one could now and can sem hunu and unipa akumem. Peter, can I trust you with the duties of a nurse? Just like Moses' mother could be trusted with the duties of a nurse. Fed the boy and took him back. When I give you people to lead, will you lead them for me or you lead them to yourself? The curse of the 21st century is deviation. Now, idols in church. Celebrity in church. People are following the pastor because of his hairstyle. This one cannot be a nurse. <laughs> if you were Moses' mother, you would not have returned Moses. <laughs> Celebrity status, elements of faulty idolatry in the arena of grace. Because you can preach more, so now you have become an effigy with demonic exalted pomp in the arena of grace. Judgment is coming and you better repent. Listen to me, there is a fine line. And that's why Jesus asked him three times. You are seeing fishes. I'm seeing helpless babies from frustrated families. I'm looking at a morally confused and bankrupt generation. I'm looking at people who now can't say whether they are men or women or half men or half woman or half man or half spirit. They don't know what they are. And I'm looking for bishops to entrust them as nurses into their hands. But can I find a man? That after I have given a church of 1,000 people to him, he will be mindful that when I feed them, I present them back to the owner. Simone! 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 Now you look at people standing and they say they are preaching. What is written rather? They say it's not it. They are not coming to preach re revelation. Be careful of what you call inspiration. Be careful. Because the souls of men when they respond to your utterance, it is by the workings of the maker of the spirit. 
Isaiah 50, the Lord God had given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. Daily he wakened my ear, morning by morning. He waked my ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God has wakened my ear and I was not disobedient. Neither turned my back to the, to the smited. You know what that means? A man that has the tongue of the learned. He is appreciated because people who hear are giving the ear of the learned. When men are ordained to hear you, be careful what you tell them as a nurse. You are saying, oh, man of God, I don't preach. Yours is the case that is even higher than the man of God. The Bible society reads is your life. And so you're going and you're coming. There are some of you, you are not preachers. But naturally, you have the grace that draws crowds. You are not a man of God, but your boy's boy's company alone is 200. But you are not a man of God. If you derail people by your actions, you are more guilty than the man of God who is struggling to get 50 people to follow him. Are you aware? The Bible society reads is your attitude. Be careful. Now, as a child of God, the first page of your, your WhatsApp status is a Bible verse. The second page is a friend of yours that is shaking the waist. The third page is, a, is three friends of yours who are twerking. Then the next place is some four friends who are jamming to secular music. Then you come back to a preaching clip from your master and your pastor. This kind of confusion, you can't be a nurse. No, sir. You think those held accountable are those who are preaching? Yes, there's a dimension of accountability that is heightened because we preach. But you, the one that God has given grace, look at the way people follow you. Look at the way people want to be like you. And I pity the movie stars. <laughs> oh my God. People, the celebrity people who are building a large following. When the soul is following you and you think the end of the following is just applause. No, sir. The end of the following is accountability. Simone, Simone, lovest thou me? The Lord, I do. Feed my lamp. Because I'm not seeing fish. I'm seeing destiny children like Moses. And I need somebody to pledge an allegiance as a faithful nurse. And it will be a blessing. Let me show you one other thing. The first time he asked Simon, do you love me? Let's see how Simon responded. Lovest thou me more than these? Verse 15. He said, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Then Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Then 16. He said unto him, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Then Jesus said unto him, What? Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. And Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. The first time he asked me, Do you love me? Peter said, Yeah. Jesus told him, Feed my lamb. You know what a lamb is? A lamb is a baby sheep. That's a lamb. Then he said, okay, feed my lambs. Then he asked him again, Simon, lovest thou me? He said, yes, I do. That's the second time. Then you know what he told him? He said, feed my sheep. It means when you feed lambs, they must grow to be sheep. You can't be feeding lambs and they remain lambs. You feed lambs, they mature to sheep. Then he asked him the third time, Simon, Simon, Lovest thou me? He said, yes. Then he said, okay, then now feed my sheep. When you feed a lamb, it grows to become a sheep. When you feed a sheep, it doesn't grow to become a caricature. It stays sheep. You know what? The grace of immaturity is nourishment to progress. The grace of maturity is consistency to remain without retrogression. Many people have grown from lamb to sheep. Then now they begin to grow to tiger. Then the next time they are growing to jaguar. Then the next time is bulldozer. Then the next time it is, then before you realize they have the epitome of a hidden idol. Let me tell you, filthy audacity is not faith. <laughs> Deviation and the pomp of the fallen ego is not divine exaltation. Feed my sheep in the kingdom as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. We are babes. See? Then we grow. 
to be sheep. Then we grow 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 to be sheep. And when we are finally grown, we are sheep. It ends there. Nothing else beyond sheep. Now, I've heard a lot of people preach all sorts of things. Many people say many things. I have nothing against anybody. I just have a sincere, humble concern concerning the identical pomp of an antichrist in the temple. <laughs> we grow from lambs to sheep. And when we grow from sheep, we grow from sheep to sheep. And it ends there. And you know what? The honor of sheep is that the master leads the sheep as a shepherd. So you, at your peak of maturity in the kingdom, you are still the sheep of his pastor. No, 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 no. We are seated in Christ in heavenly places and we are co-regents. Co-regents in what sense? In the sense of the sheep of his pastor. Be careful what you grow into. In the name of having been fed with revelation, be careful what you grow into. I cannot overemphasize this gentle nudging of the spirit. You see, all the error in the arena of grace has been because men have grown from lambs and they become sheep. Now, when they get to the level of sheep, they are tempted to grow into something else beyond sheep. And they say they have now gotten to a point where even God cannot fault them. I'm a man of God. You can't criticize me, no problem. I'm not the one going to criticize you. When the one who can criticize you comes, you will wish I had criticized you. You've grown from sheep to something that is unorthodox. And Jesus said, the lamb, the highest honor is sheep. And you know the pinnacle of sheep is the ordination for honorable slaughter. And this is what Jesus told Peter. Let me read it and shock you. As we round up. Feed my sheep. Verse 18. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, Simon, thou gathest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall get thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. And this spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, follow me. Do you know the first invitation <laughs> Jesus gave Peter to follow him? He was mending a net. And Jesus told him, follow me. He got up and followed him. The next time Jesus asked Peter to follow him after the resurrection, he told him what kind of death he would die before he said, follow me. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> A bloated ego owing to a claim that you have been fed with revelation makes you an antichrist, nothing more. An honorable pursuit that is crystallized from an ordained call has the dictates of the collar attached and sometimes the frightening details is how you will die before they follow me. Everybody is telling us that when Jesus called them, he called them to build the biggest auditorium, own the biggest aircraft industry. Everybody says, when Jesus called me, he told me I'll be the richest man on earth. Every child of God says, when Jesus called him. But very few of the Peters are walking around who know how the master has told them how they will die. Imagine an invitation on the detailed premise of the clarity of your mode of death. Kwejo! Oh, you have a boat, you. Me didn't follow me. That's when you say, eh, -eh sir, let's sit down and talk. <laughs> There's nothing to sit down and talk. You know, when people begin to talk like 
they decide to God what happens to them. It's because they don't really know the identity of the risen Lord who gives the call. Peter's resolve to follow the master was on the clarity of his mode of death specified. When you were young, you get yourself and you go where you want. Peter, that was when you were young. When you mature in the kingdom, you become sheep for an ordained slaughter. I'm not talking about premature casualty. So before you say, as for me, nothing bad can happen to me because I've gotten a revelation by faith. Hey, there is a kind of revelation by faith that comes with the clarity of the mode in which you will die. If God has not made you suffer that, humble yourself. For God is a God of actions and by him, words are weighed. <laughs> God is a God of knowledge and by him, actions are weighed. Do you know that there are people who have been given the authoritative note of clarity as to how they must suffer for Christ. As for you, you say all the details you have is how you will be rich in God's name. No problem. As long as grace is giving you opportunity to stay rich, keep your mouth humble. Because there are apostolic details that may be too much for your mouth to contain. People say when they are nourished, they become lions nobody can touch. And Jesus says that's a false doctrine. When you are nourished, you become sheep whose death can be specified by the master. Are you ready for it? We are looking at stardom as ministry. Ministry is not a call to stardom. We are looking at stardom as of discipleship. How would the people know that we are the children of God if we are not the rich ones, if we are not the one owning the big houses? Sir, that is a good supposition. It is not sound doctrine. You know sound doctrine? Sound doctrine is when the one coming to do the feeding, the pastor himself, he has been given the details of, about how he would die for his Lord before he's coming to preach. When you get the details of how many things you must suffer for the master, you get humility. In Acts 26, the Bible says, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered, I think myself happy, O King Agrippa, because I shall answer before thee today touching all the things whereof I'm accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among my own people at Jerusalem, know all these people which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most strictest test of our religion, I lived a Pharisee, and I stand and I am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto the fathers, which promised our 12 tribes, instantly serving God night and day, hope to come, for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with thee that God should raise the dead? I verily thought within myself to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison. And, 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 uh, and having received authority from the chief priest, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punished them oft in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and about them that journeyed with me. And when we were falling to the earth, I heard the voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Shaul, Shaul, why persecutest thou me? And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I shall appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith which is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. 
but showed first to them of Damascus and at Jerusalem, then into Judea, and then unto the uttermost part of, 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 the, of, of the earth, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help from God, I continue to this day, them witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those things which the prophet and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first to rise from the dead, and he should show light to the people and to the Gentiles. And the Bible said, while he spake with a loud voice, then Festus said, Oh, Paul, thou art mad, thou art beside thyself. Much learning God make thee mad. And he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and so badness. Truth and so badness. Truth and so badness. Because you know what? The mandate provoked an atmosphere of persecution around me. I myself, bringing the food to feed people, have been given the details of my calling that suffering is part. You know why? Because the master himself, the mandate was that, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and by that he should show light to the Gentiles. As for you, you say when they gave you mandate, it was be to become a billionaire and to live large. <laughs> That's a good request. It's a good supposition. If we bank our hopes on that supposition, we are in for trouble. Peter looks into the eyes of Jesus. What did you just say? He said, no, I'm describing your death. I'm describing your death. And at the time that John was writing this scripture as an eyewitness, most likely Peter was dead. And he might have seen the way the description of Jesus came to pass exactly when Peter was dying. And he would sit on the Isle of Patmos and he would ask for so badliness for you and I. Obiaze nyangupon venono, okachen sonu no the most richest person, no problem. Yanuma and Yanko Pon Fre one or catcher won't say ye bet you want so as you won't am one fa yaka yaka de muni dinti one more way. That's why the pulpit has become a point for stardom, eh? That's why everybody wants to come with a certain dimension of fashion and come and command applause. No, sir. There is a clause in the laws of truth concerning how you must end, if you dare to know. If grace gives you an honorable and free setting, yeah, so badliness. As I'm preaching to you now, somebody is having to say his last prayer with the barrel of a gun on his forehead. Nobody has pointed the barrel of a gun to my forehead. So if I have this freedom to preach the truth, I need to tell you what is true. There is a dimension of the honorable calling ordained for matured sheep. And sometimes there are details of how they must suffer for the sake of the gospel. It takes audacity to face truth. It takes seduction to marry error. Which one do you have? I pray for you. Time is up, children of the Lord. That we must fearlessly declare the whole counsel of God. I want you to provoke something. God, give me audacity to stand for the truth. Man of God, the things that you are saying, are you not afraid? So, if we are afraid of the truth, what should we preach? What should we preach? Somebody has been on the dialysis machine for 27 years as a pastor. You think he doesn't have faith? Uh, there are honorable dimensions of the custodian of souls. Nurses appointed as of the order of the divine who have audacity implanted in their spirit to know the details of their suffering and yet they say yes. And you think what I owe you is that you become a billionaire. No, sir, that's not the only thing I owe you. The, all the, the truth I owe you is that we are called honorably as sheep. Some people say they become lions, nothing can touch, no problem. I did not see any sheep being fed to become a lion. There's a lion-like dimension in your system. But in the kingdom, we don't do transmutation. No. 
A lion is a lion, and a lamb is a lamb. In the account of Revelation chapter 5, the Bible says, he said, I, I saw in the hand of the, of, of, of the ancient of days a scroll written, um, 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 on the in, uh, written within and on, and on the backside, having seven seals, eh? and sealed with seven seals. Then he said, and I saw an, a strong angel crying with a loud voice, who is able to take the scroll and to open the seals and to, and to declare the content. And he said, there was nobody in heaven, neither on earth, neither underneath the earth, who could even take the scroll or to look on it. Then an elder flew to me and said, weep not. The lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed, not just to take the scroll, but to break the seals and to declare the mysteries of the divine modalities for the redemption of humanity. He's gotten what it takes. And he said, I turn. He said, the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. When I turned, I saw a lamb as it had been slain. In the kingdom, the sufferings of the lamb, the lion can never stop it. The sufferings of the lamb, the lion in the lamb can never protest the sufferings of the lamb. There is an honor placed on the call to suffer for Christ. I was seeing a church that was trying to stage a protest about the, um, the lockdown in one of the cities in, in America. I've forgotten. Somebody has gone to burn down the church. It's in the news. Persecution has started. And yet everybody says God called him to be billionaire. Say, that's a good supposition. It's not correct doctrine. Where we have gotten to, you need to get up and say, Kolo motutubri iti adosekete kabaya. I sacrifice the comfort in me that is capable of denying the master. This is what we have to feed our audacity on. Not to be claiming mansions and um, over square acres and meters that we cannot even have time to work on. If God brings those things, that is good. If God gives you a big house, live in it. If he gives you a big house and you say, you don't live, it to, live in it, but bring it to me, bring it to me. But let me tell you something. If you bring that big house, the first message I have for you is, if God takes the big house from you, will you get audacity to stick with the faith? This is where the chapter we have got into. The first follow me, say, I will make you fishes of men. <laughs> the second follow me, you, you will die at firing squad, machine gun, or AK-47, tear ball, fret, boom, boom. and then your intestines will scatter. Follow me. Now, where are the ministers who have the details of the suffering? Everybody say they have the prophetic details of the dimensions of their tabernacles that they will build. Where are those with the prophetic details of the suffering? Now, if you are suffering, you are bastardized. So everybody is living with strong anxiety. They are afraid that something will happen to them. People will say they don't have faith. And so everybody is peacefully pretending. The day we stop pretending, we we'll start rising with genuine truth. It's time to say, no, that thing in me, that can sacrifice the master. I sacrifice it in Jesus' name. Simon, Simon, lovest thou me? Feed my sheep. The last thing I leave with you, we are out of here. Jesus told him, follow me. After you receive the details of your death. So he said, we are, okay, but what about this guy following you? The greatest weakness of the strongest man is the desire to be like another man. That's the greatest weakness of the strongest man. When he wants to be like another man. Jesus said, you, let me describe the way you will die. He described Peter's death and he said, follow me. Immediately, Jesus said, follow me. He was going to follow him. Then he saw John. Then he said, ah, but what about this guy? <laughs> and John, when he was right, he said, the disciple that Jesus loved, whose head was also on the breast of the master. So Jesus calls you and says, hey, my guy, follow me. Then you turn yourself and say, ah, but Jesus, what about those prophets that when they prophesy, everything is happening and they are rich? They are, it looks like their head is on your chest, though. Now that's, that's the bait of every Christian. Follow me. Say, hey, when will my church members also be 100,000 and 200,000 like, like that man? When will I also be driving cars and buying my wife cars like that, my schoolmate? Ah, you want to know when? You know what Jesus said? I like the mouth of Jesus. There are statements that he would take and put down. If you lift it from scripture, it's an insult. He looked into the eyes of Peter and told him, 
if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to you? Follow me. That's the third time he said, follow me. What about those who have been never sick? What about those who have lands and cars? And What is that to you? If I will that they will be driving cars and now they will be going for a ride on the moon before I come. What is that to you? Shut your ignorant mouth and follow me. Sanctified cheekiness. What is that to you? I'm talking to you about serious matter. Look at the prophesied death ahead of you and build resistance to retrogression. And you are here busy yourself about somebody's own. Father, when will I prophesy like this prophet? You want to prophesy like that prophet? Father, when will I also break through like... No, I'm telling you details about a personal calling. The strongest weakness of the strongest man is the desire to be like another man. This is all the distraction in destiny. Do you know that you are just one night away from becoming a billionaire? You are delaying your journey by needless questions with the Messiah. Father, the way I'm suffering, can't you see? Did you blind him? Father, the way, I, the way things are scattering, the way, doesn't it concern you? Father, the way, no. You know what you are doing? You, the comparison is killing you. Four wheels with high heels, creating sore heels, not necessary. Not necessary. Father, when will, it, when, when will I also get there? When will I also get there? And you know what they mean by the there? You know what they mean by the there? <laughs> Father, when, when will I also get there? When will I also get there? You know what they mean by the there? They also want a convoy when they are coming. Three before, three after. What sort of vanity is this? You know what they mean? Father, when will I get there? When will I get there? And you know what the there means? When is it that when I'm coming, somebody is holding my right hand, another is holding my left? And then somebody... When will I get there? All that there means are ah, the day I also be able to go to vacation at Barbados and I'll go to vacation on an island. You can't even swim and you want to go to vacation on an island. When will I, when will I get there? When, when will I get there? And the there means they'll get to a place where iPhone comes, they buy it. Galaxy Note 20 comes, they buy it. MacBook Pro comes, they buy it. And then giant screen on the wall, they buy it. That's the there. Way. Sister. And how who I? And how if it yet God is not by your hair cranny and yeah, ain't he? And how why the day is here? Say it, the day is here, is here. Prosperity, prosperity, and uni and uni. So, after here, where we are, where are we going after sheep? What do you become? Sheep, feed my lambs. Okay, that's when we're young. We've been fed now, we are sheep. What's the next level? Sheep. No, the level after sheep is what? Sheep. What else do you want to become? Jaguar. You can't become Jaguar. You can't, can you become, you can't become Jaguar. And Jesus told Peter. He was telling serious matters. And now Peter said, but what about John? He said, no, sir. What is that to you? That sanctified chickeners. You know, shut your ignorant mouth. Let's talk about serious matters, sir. I'm giving you keys. I have 40 days. I'm going back. Can't you see? Young for three years. Nyankopan for three years and console you to forget the competition you set between you, yourself, and your classmate. So every time you have to come and calm you down, don't worry, you catch up with Kwesi and Ajua from class one. You are still competing with these people in your heart from class one. Who set this competition? Who? Who? When will I get there? There, no, anyhow. If here is not there for you, there is no another there. There, 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 no, anyhow. Godliness with contentment is great gain. But godliness is not gain. One is a doctrine. One is a supposition. Choose the doctrine because that's what has truth. A mere do. You're saying, Lord, thank you. Thank you that I do not have to be an apostle Joe to be dear to your heart. The divine design when you are invited to dine. Thank you, Lord. I do not have to be like any of my listeners. I am called as a man of God to preach, and I will preach. If God gives me money, fine. I said yes to ministry. I made a choice. 
to honor God. I cannot be hoarding things like somebody who has not made that choice. Greed is not in the apostles' creed. It's not. It's not. Ah, if God gives me money, oh, bless God. We push the kingdom with money. I don't think God called me to be the richest man. For what? <laughs> For what? No. If that's your calling, I pray for you that you become, you become it. When you're the richest man, you need a calling to be. I pray that if that's your calling, you become it. Me, that's not my calling. And you know, I'm here. You might have a calling with details, graphic details. And you say, what about John? So shut up. If I will that he tarry before I come. You know what that means? If I want that, he won't die. That's how Jesus talked about to Peter. You described how I would die. What about the ones who will not die? What, what about this guy? How will he die? So shut up. If I will, he will not die. What do you mean? Father, I'm sick. What about the believer who has never been sick? Shut up. If I will that he will never be sick till I, I return. Does that concern you? Father, why is it that it's been 10 years that I got married and I don't have a child, but I'm a prayer warrior? Shut up. What about the other people who are not prayer warriors who are giving birth to triplets and now they are giving birth to children they don't even want to take care of? Shut up. If I will that they will be giving birth like tadpoles till I come. What is that to you? That's God talking and you, are, you will be taken aback where from this cheekiness. That's what will save you. End the competition. End it. Free your spirit. I want you to say, Lord, I want grace to love you and audacity to face the details of the calling. Audacity to face the details of the calling. Oh, the symbol Ravi Zacharias was. Preach the gospel. Sometimes they will ask him, what about those who were not healed? He said, those who were not healed have been enveloped by love. He said, I have 18 millimeter rods in my spine and yet I'm preaching. Now, God has called him in a season where he's bringing an end to apologetics on the strength of a reason. He's now bringing the Daniel dimension of apologetics. Intellect with the prophetic. Intellectuals who are ten times better in training, and yet they are ten times more prophetic than the most sophisticated spiritual machinery in Babylon. Now we are, we are looking for people who are, who are brains and they are prophetic. It's the next level of apologetics. What a great hero this man has been. We fell in love with him when we were babies in Christ. On campus places and we look at the way this man will smile at every question. And by the superimposition of divine wisdom above the natural frailty of the intellect, he will communicate with the tongue of the learned and people's hearts and their questions will be appeased. Now he is gone. And if you look at the headlines, renowned Christian apologetic goes to be with the Lord by cancer. Ravi Zacharias, Christian apologetic, goes home by cancer. Dies by cancer. And the world thinks they are casting a slayer on his name. No, sir. Peter knew the details of how he would die before he said, I will follow you. These things are not dishonorable things, though, but in a great house, they are not only vessels of gold and of silver but also of wood and of clay, and some to honor, and some to honor. But the honorable dimensions of the call is not pampering. I always tell you, spiritual authority, the name you revere, the words you hear, the garment you wear, and the marks you bear. These are generals in the faith. There are some people who are touting that they can never be sick. They may be of the order of John's. There are others whose death was specified before they said yes to the call. They are not equal. Whose business is it to rank one above the other? We are maturing for what is coming. May you receive grace to hold on. I said, may you receive grace to hold on. May you receive grace to hold on. To prosper is not to be pampered. Receive grace to hold on to the details of the call. Lift up your right hand and be on your feet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Kobado setede. What a blessed time it has been in the presence of the Lord. You're going to lift up your voice and say, Lord, I lose fear for persecution. I lose fear for affliction. Give me grace that can take the journey through the valley of the shadow of death. 
Don't make me a Christian that is afraid of any persecution so that it is only seductive preachers who can talk to me. I am now building resistance to face the truth. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, let me lose your fear. <laughs> we are saying another prophetic prayer between now and the ending of june god is recruiting an army a new army for the end time I'm saying between now and June because God has given me a word, insight about timing. A lot of the times we think that eternity is just aloof and God doesn't have a timetable. No, God has a timetable. Under the heaven, everything is made beautiful in his time. There's a timetable. So we are praying and we're saying, Lord, this move that you have spoken through your servant is going to be prophet. Make us inclusive. You're going to say, Lord, let me not miss the invitation to the front line. Listen, God is lifting up apologetic prophets. There is a dimension of marvelous help he's bringing the church through skilled men. Skilled men. There are many people that God is going to anoint with skill and with his spirit to defend the faith. And their anointing is supernatural. Remember? There is divine design when you are invited to dine. There is a blueprint when God gives you abundance. And many people are about to hit a breakthrough. But in the breakthrough is a mandate. And you are saying, Lord, I do not want to miss the invitation to the front line. Make me spiritually alert so I can win souls and I can convert people in this generation. You are saying, Lord, as you are inviting people to the honorable spiritual front line, grant that I will be called. Lift up your voice in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, let me not miss this invitation, O God. Father, let me not miss this invitation, O God. Father, Give me a heart to convert souls. Oh, my God, so many of you. For the kingdom of God. Give me a heart to defend the faith. Mata la ria. Rida la baka da la ria. Rega la gaba da. Ia ma kole kapa. O sa te de bria ba da ba da kato me kata kapa ishala. O sa kapa ye gada. Ye so to lo ba da. Ia la kapa la kapa la kapa. Ia kata la ba da. Ye sa ta la ba da. We are praying our last prayer. Jesus called Peter and he described the means by which he would die. And Peter was asking, but what about this guy? And Jesus said, if I will that he will not die, what can you do? Jesus specified the means of Peter's death. In other words, nobody can kill you until I have said your time is up. That's what it meant from another angle. I have designed 
that at a certain point in time, you will exit into glory by this mode. Because I have designed it, if anybody designs any other thing, it will not work. And then Peter says, okay, well, why don't you talk about this guy's death also? He said, no. If I decide that this guy will not die, even before I come back, nobody can kill him. You know what that means? A man whose death the heavens has designed, there is no other design of death that can ever work on that child. It is on this prophetic authority that we are going to cancel premature death. Amen. Yes. We are going to violently abort the mechanics that are sucking life by wickedness. We will abort them in Jesus' name. Jesus said, when you were young, you will go. But when you are old, it means I have ordained it that you will live and get old. So before that old years that I have ordained, nobody can give any other design that will contest my own and overpower it. It is not possible. You're going to pray. You're saying, Lord, because of my mandate, I cannot die before my time. Because of your promise, the resurrection, and that you have power over death. Thou that art the blessed and the only potentate, Melech HaMelechim Adonai HaAdonim, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the, only, the blessed and the only potentate who alone had immortality. It is immortality that decides to time. The ancient of days fulfills the number of your days. And you are going to pray and say, Lord, you alone have immortality as the ancient of days. Fulfill the number of my days. Let premature death against me. Even by the fiercest mechanics of the dark domain, it will not work. Lift up your voice. <laughs> We come against the battle of the Lord. We destroy the enemies. We arrest and destroy the enemies. We come against the battle of the Lord. 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 Palama, 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 Palama,
The ancient of days will fulfill the number of your days. Kuma Nazuri Itia Baloko Rumanduri Aseteni Yamalonte de Bezikaya Namazundele. Thou that art the only blessed and only potentate, King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone had immortality, dwelling in the light that no man can approach, whom no man had seen nor can see. Utu baluri siya balokri katamania sate de balunde. The Lord that by the honors of the resurrection, which was dead and is alive forevermore, and has the keys of hell and of death. This Lord says you will not die before your time. This Lord says that premature death is not your portion. And in as much as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath, but by he that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made the surety of a better testament. And they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is all able also to save them to the uttermost, that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became as who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needed not daily to offer up sacrifice as those priests, first for himself and then for the sins of the people. For this he did once when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men priests which have infirmity. But the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. We petition your high priestly ordination, thou that hearest prayer. And we declare that because you continue ever and you make intercession daily for us, you are able to save us to the uttermost. Let it not be recorded in history. Let it never be chronicled in the archives that we that have been bought by your blood expired prematurely by, divine, by, by devilish mechanics. Let it never be recorded that we that have trusted in you we expired by the mechanics of witchcraft. Let it never be recorded. Kubato said, de de de. Let it never be recorded. That we that have reposed our hopes in you, we expired because of the wickedness of the dark domain. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. Our hope that we have in you, O God, is because of the immutability of your counsel, that because you cannot lie and you have sworn to preserve us, we will live and not die. 
How shall I curse whom God had not cursed? And how shall I defy whom the Lord had not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Behold, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Yaakov, or the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my latter end be like his. From this apostolic hour, there is a seal upon your forehead. And inumusu tutumauru kriatasa balekruti abalete zedezem. Upon the honors of the God that cannot lie, I prophesy as I am stead, you will live long. You will live long. You will not die before your time. You will not expire prematurely. Wickedness will not have an upper hand over your life. Because the Father in heaven has by his love ordained you to preservation. Be sustained by the arm of grace that never knows defeat. And against all the odds, command an upper hand. All hail. By grace we prevail. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Put your hands together. God bless you. It's been a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. It's a good time to bless the Lord with an offering. And like I keep telling all of you, we keep praying sincerely for all those of you that are going against odds to sow seeds and show your love to God in, in offerings and tithes in this season. It's not easy, and you have done wonderfully well sticking to the, the discipline to honor God with your seed. And I know that the heavens will respond abundantly. It's been a powerful time in God's presence. This is what God laid on my heart. Today we are um, praying and getting ready to begin to engage the prophetic time in our services consistently. So do not um, be disappointed if you think we are not doing personal prophecy now. We are building you up so that you can affect what the prophet will see and prophesy. You have no business inviting a prophet when you have not performed ordinances that can affect what the prophet sees. If you have done your homework, when the prophet comes, his words will soothe you. So we are building faith and building maturity. And then very soon, especially from next month, we are believing God that we'll get divine design to begin to include a prophetic um, on a more pronounced level in our services. And then it will be a blessing. But tonight, God came through me to tell you that premature death is out. And from this hour, you have received authority and audacity to face the truth. To be called to follow the master is unto persecution. And sometimes even the details of death is spelled out. But we are not afraid. You get, remember, instruction to find power to get and a blessing to own. These are the three highways of acquisition in the realms of the spirit. Finding is because of instruction. Getting is because of power. But being um, a partaker or enjoying the blessing is as a result of being discharged by a blessing. I pray that you will get all these things. When you write N-O-W backwards, you get W-O-N. And if you rearrange the letters, you get O-W-N. God has discharged you now because he has already won. And by that, you will have your own. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. It's been a wonderful time in, your pres in the presence of the Lord. God bless you and all of you that are putting um, the sacrifices together, watching online, doing all these things. Keep sharing, keep spreading the gospel and the good news. Grace will meet you at the point of your need. Sunday, 9 o'clock a.m., you can't miss. Oh, my God, it gets greater and greater from glory to glory, from sheep to sheep. Praise the Lord. And I know the Sunday is going to be a powerful time in the presence of God as well. So my heart goes out to you. Very soon, we'll be getting very interactive during the services. And thank all of, um, all of you for the good things you're doing on the line to be able to keep the services active. Pray for one another. Pray for the pastors and every one of you. Very soon, you'll be getting a surprise um, um, online visit from uh, Paulina and Reverend Nathan. Your boy. I believe it will be a powerful blessing. From the refiner's fire, you don't expire. Keep pressing on because when you make an extraordinary mark, heaven will make an extraordinary remark. All here.
By grace alone we prevail. Amen.